Now, the Roma Wine Company of Fresno, California presents... Suspense. Tonight, Roma Wines bring you the story of Ivy by that high priestess of the art of suspense, Mary Bella Clowns, and starring the young actress whose performance you admired in the picture, An American Romance, Miss Anne Richards. Suspense is presented for your enjoyment by Roma Wines. That's R-O-M-A, Roma Wines. Those excellent California wines that can add so much pleasantness to the way you live, to your happiness and entertaining guests, to your enjoyment of everyday meals. Yes, right now a glass full would be very pleasant, as Roma Wines bring you a remarkable tale of suspense. And with the story of Ivy and with the performance of Anne Richards as its extraordinary heroine, Roma Wines hope indeed to keep you in... Suspense! The Story of Ivy. Ivy Lexton's own story is told to Victoria Matthews, an exclusive feature of the Morning Herald. I wrote it in the first person, Mrs. Lexton. I hope you don't mind. Oh, it doesn't matter, so long as the story is accurate. You can understand my anxiety, Miss Matthews. After all, I owe it to my public. Mm, yes, of course. Perhaps you'd like to read it through and make suggestions before signing the release? Oh, if it's not too much bother. On the contrary, hearing it in your own words would be a decided help to me. There you are, Miss Matthews. I'll read it out then. Are you comfortable? Would you like anything? A cigarette, perhaps? Oh, it's unfortunate that I have no maid here with me at present. Thank you. I'm quite comfortable. Please go ahead, Mrs. Lexton. Very well. Chapter One. I was born in Hobbs Court, Soho, and I was christened Ivy Gudge. I hated my name, and I hated the sordid surroundings into which I had been born. And while yet a child, I made up my mind that wealth and position should be mine at whatever cost. As a child, my favorite book was the story of Nell Gwynne, the commoner who became the favorite of a king. And one sentence of Nell's, in the face of all her success, made an indelible impression on me. It was this. In life, I have never sought anything that did not seem to have been placed in my hands by providence itself. At the close of my first season as an actress, our show was bankrupted by an embezzling manager, and I was left stranded in the provinces and stone broke. Many great gentlemen had shown me attentions and showered me with presents, but I sought assistance from none of them. And it was Jarvis Lexton a young man whom I'd scarcely noticed, who came to me in my hour of need. Ivy, I know there are hundreds of men who adore you. Men with titles, wealth, social position, much more than I can offer. But there's not one who loves you more than I do. Will you marry me, Ivy? And I said yes, because it was offered. We were frightfully happy that first year of our marriage, and Jarvis was so generous, humoring all my little whims, spending much more money on me than he could afford. It always gave him a thrill of boyish pleasure to see my portraits in the newspapers and magazines with captions such as the beautiful Mrs. Ivy Lexton wearing Vionette's latest creation or Mrs. Jarvis Lexton at Ascot with Lady Hampton and Lord Rushworth. He kept a scrapbook of them and really seemed quite pleased about everything until one day. I say, Ivy, don't you think you're being seen and photographed a bit too much with this fellow Rushworth? Oh, but darling... I thought you liked having me hobnob with the peers of the realm. What about this other chap, Roderick Gresham? You know, it does seem a bit thick for me to work my head off 12 hours a day, figuring out ways to finance your clothes and jewels so you can be photographed with other men. It's got to stop in any case, Ivy. We're broke. Oh, you mean our money is all spent up? We're wiped out. The bailiff's attached my office furniture. I can't even pay the rental on this flat. What are we going to do, Jarvis? I'll let you figure that one out. You're so good at spending money, perhaps you can think of a way to make some. So you see, Jarvis really made the suggestion to me himself. I don't know what we'd have done during the next few months if it hadn't been for the generosity of Roger Gresham and Lord Rushworth. Roger was only a young doctor starting out in practice and couldn't help a great deal, of course, though he was even fonder of me than Miles Rushworth. Now that I look back on it, 
It was in July that things took such a distressing turn. I'd been out to dinner with Roger Gresham, and I asked him up to the flat afterwards to say hello to Jarvis and cheer him up. Poor Jarvis hadn't been feeling well lately. Well, Abby, this is a fine hour to come home to your loving husband. Where have you been? Out, darling. Aren't you going to say hello to Roger? Well, I suppose I should thank him for keeping my wife amused. Oh, I, I say, old fellow. Roger has just been telling me the most fascinating things. He was called as an expert, you know, for the Crown and the Bronson case. I asked him to come up and tell you about it, darling, since you're such a detective fan. Well, that's nice of you, Roger. Do tell me all about the Bronson case. Well, uh, there was nothing so interesting about the murder itself. It was just a simple case of arsenic poisoning. You don't say. As, as a medical man, what interested me uh, about it was what a doctor ought to do in a case where he suspects a patient's being secretly poisoned. What would you do, Roger? Well, I... Uh, it's hard to say. If, if you called in the police and your suspicions turned out to be unfounded, but it would just about finish your career. I, I suppose that's why so many poisoners get away with it. <laughs> well, I, I guess I'd better be getting along. Drop in again sometime, Roger, and bring your own arsenic. Jarvis! Well, well cheerio. Ivy, see you later. Really, Jarvis, I've never been so humiliated. You know I don't like him. Why do you persist in bringing him here? Why, darling, <laughs> I do believe you're jealous. Well, why shouldn't I be? I like it when you're jealous. It's like old times, isn't it? Do you deny that he's in love with you and that you've encouraged him, him and I don't know how many others? Oh, now, darling, don't be like that. There's only one other. You admit it. Well, darling, we may as well be realistic. We're still stony broke and you don't seem to have any prospects. What are you driving at? Well, Miles got back in town today and Who's I'm Miles? seeing him tomorrow night. Lord Rushworth, darling. No, oh, that titled idiot. That titled idiot has been paying the rent on this flat for the past six months, if you want to know the truth. Why, you little... Well, now, darling, can I help it if Miles Rushworth is awfully, awfully fond of me? And if it helps us, what's the difference? Go on. I'm listening. Darling, look. I'm just a burden to you at this stage, aren't I? So you want me to give you a divorce, is that it? Needn't make any difference between us, darling. As soon as I'm Lady Rushworth, I'll settle a nice allowance on you. Are you serious? Of course I'm serious, darling. Well, I don't play your rotten, filthy game. Jarvis! You married me for richer or poorer, and you're going to stick to your bargain. And if you try to divorce me, I'll make such a scandal your precious Lord Rushworth will wish he'd never met you. In fact, I have a notion to do it anyway. Oh, Jarvis, you wouldn't. That would spoil everything. Now, you're frightened, aren't you? Well, I'll give you your choice. Either you give up your boyfriends and keep me, or you'll lose all three of us. Which will it be? Well, well, all right, Jarvis. I'll tell Roger and Miles both. I can't see them again, ever. Why didn't you just ask me to kill myself? I might have obliged if you'd been more honest. Jarvis, you mustn't say such things. You're poison to me. I ought to let you go. I won't. And if it's any satisfaction to you, I'd be better off dead than with things the way they are. <laughs> You see, Miles, I simply can't go on seeing you. It isn't fair to Jarvis. Is he being fair to you? You don't understand. I'm all he has left now. You're so good, so innocent. Can't you see he's just holding on to you out of spite? Has he done one thing? Has he even tried to get a job so that he could support you? I married him for richer or poorer, until death do us part. Then I pray death be merciful to us both, Ivy. Oh, you mustn't say such things. It's wicked. I'm sorry, my dear. Ivy, I wanted to give you this little remembrance. I had hoped to give it to you under happier circumstances, but please accept it now as a farewell present. Oh, Lord Rushworth, you shouldn't have. It's only a little thing, the little handbag you admired so oh. much. We saw it in Cartier's window. Oh, Remember? the one with the emerald clasp. Oh, you shouldn't have. Oh, it must have cost a fortune. Look in the mirror. Oh. The emerald matches your eyes. You will accept it. Won't you? Oh, Miles, I'll carry it with me always. Ivy, 
darling, come in, come in. Oh, I was just in the neighborhood, Roger, and I thought that yeah, I... Yeah, yeah, let me take your things. I see. Oh, what a smart handbag. Mm, real emerald, isn't it? Yes, Miles gave it to me. Isn't it lovely? You know what it means, accepting a present like that from him. Oh, don't be silly, Roger. It was a farewell present. Farewell? Darling, do you really mean that? Roger, Roger, please, please. What if your housekeeper walked in? Oh, oh I'm sorry. Well, come along, darling. Come in here. I, I, I was just putting up a prescription. What a queer sort of room. I never knew a doctor's surgery looked like this. Weren't you ever in here before? No. What's in that bottle? Huh? Oh. oh, arsenic. I thought it was a poison. Well, it is. It's also a fine tonic taken in the right amounts. How much would it take to uh, kill someone? Oh, about the same amount as the amount of sugar it would take to sweeten your coffee. Oh, doesn't it give you an eerie feeling? What? That little glass jar. There's death in it. Prison, waiting to escape. Oh, aren't you being rather morbid? <laughs> <laughs> Will you have one or two spoonfuls of death in your coffee, darling? <laughs> <laughs> I say, you are a little Borgia, darling. <laughs> oh, it's my patient now. Wait here, now. Shan't be a moment. As soon as he'd left the room, I picked up the glass jar on the end of the table, unscrewed the top of it, almost without being aware of what I was doing. How strange and exciting to know that death was in that jar, in those little white crystals. Then, as if some power outside myself had suddenly taken possession of me, I pressed the catch of that lovely jeweled handbag and commenced spooning out the white crystals. One, two, three. Oh. Sorry to be so long, darling. Oh. I had to listen to a recital of the Colonel's symptoms. Oh, oh, oh that's all right. I I was just fixing my makeup. I can't seem to find my lipstick. I say, old girl, you're looking rather pale. Perhaps I'd better prescribe a tonic for you. Oh, no. I'm just a little tired, that's all. Hello. What is it, Roger? Oh, nothing. I, I could have sworn I put the cap back on the spot. Oh, well. On the bus, all the way back to Kensington, I kept wondering why I had done that funny thing. It seemed as if everyone was staring at me and at the little handbag with the emerald, emerald clasp. In a momentary surge of panic, I wondered if they'd guessed my secret. The little white crystals of death I had carried away with me. For what? For whom? Then of a sudden it came to me. Providence had placed in my hands the means of helping my poor, unhappy husband. <laughs> For suspense, Roma Wines are bringing you as star Miss Anne Richards, whom you have heard in the first act of The Story of Ivy by Mrs. Bella Clowns, which is Roma Wines' presentation tonight of Suspense. Between the acts of suspense, this is Truman Bradley for Roma Wines. Gracious hostess, Elsa Maxwell makes this timely suggestion. During the warm weather, I'd suggest you try America's smartest, coolest drink, refreshing Roma wine and soda. So simple and yet so charming. When the temperature soars, enjoy iced, thirst-quenching Roma wine and soda. Simply half-fill tall glasses with good Roma California Burgundy or Roma California Sauterne. Add ice cubes and sparkling water. A little sugar, if you wish. And for a decorative touch, garnish with cherries and slices of fruit. The secret of the flavorful goodness of Roma wine and soda is the distinguished Roma wine, unvaryingly good, always high in quality of bouquet, brilliance, and taste. The result of selected grapes, slowly brought to perfection in California's choicest vineyards, carefully, unhurriedly, guided to flavorfulness, by the ancient skill of Roma's famed wineries. Yet all this goodness is yours for only pennies a glass. Remember, because of uniformly fine quality at reasonable cost, more Americans enjoy Roma 
than any other wine. R-O-M-A, Roma Wines. And now Roma Wines bring back to our Hollywood soundstage Anne Richards, who continues the story of Ivy, a play well calculated to keep you in suspense. My husband's illness lasted only a little more than a week, but to me it seemed an intolerably long time. Thanks to the generosity of Lord Rushworth, I was able to have a nurse in to look after him, but I couldn't help wishing there was something more I could do for him. I'd used up nearly all of the poison I'd carried away that night from Roger's dispensary, but instead of the merciful death I had hoped it would bring, it seemed only to cause poor Jarvis to suffer more pain. There were only a few grains of the white crystals left in the bottom of the little handbag with the emerald clasp. And I hadn't the heart to go on with it. Besides, Jarvis' doctor was commencing to ask too many questions. I decided to consult another physician. And under the circumstances, Roger Gresham seemed the wisest choice. Ivy, I came the moment I received your message. He's suffering so dreadfully, Roger. I hadn't any idea it would be so painful. You hadn't uh, any idea what? Oh, I, I, well, I, I mean, he complained of a stomach ache, and suddenly, and the night... Where is he? I'll have a look at him. In here. This is Dr. Gresham, nurse. How do you do, Doctor? Jarvis, I've asked Roger to look at you. You don't mm. mind, do you, dear? Get him out of here. I've been poisoned. He's the one who poisoned me. Get him out of here. Oh, boy, he's been that distracted, he has. I'll just prescribe oh. a little sedative for him, nurse. I'll go and order up some tea, Roger. You will stay, won't you? Oh, yes. Yes, thanks. Oh, Mrs. Lexton, I was just looking for you. Dr. Berwick is waiting in the drawing room with another gentleman, Mum. I'll see what they want. Order up some tea, will you, dear? Well, uh, there you are, Mrs. Lexton. Uh, this is Inspector Orpington. Inspector? Of uh, Scotland Yard, ma'am. Oh. Uh, Dr. Berwick tells me he has reason to suspect that your husband is suffering from arsenic poisoning, uh, Miss Lexton. What? Oh, I... I don't understand. Your husband keeps speaking of someone named uh, Roger Gresham. Uh, is that the name, Dr. Berwick? Uh, yes, yes. Why, that's Dr. Gresham. He's in there now with my mm, husband. Good Lord. Uh, come along, Inspector. Uh, you'd better wait here, Mrs. Lexton. Never until that moment had I realized how foolish my actions had been. Surely now they would suspect poor Roger. If there had only been someone to confide in. I felt so alone. I'll have your license for this question, do you hear me? But, but look here, Beric. Mrs. Lexton never told me there was another doctor on the case. Oh, is that true, Mrs. Lexton? Why, yes. Dr. Gresham is an old friend of mine, and I saw no harm in his looking in. Well, nevertheless, I shan't sign the death certificate, not till there's a post-mortem. Death certificate? I'm sorry, Mrs. Lexton. It's our painful duty to inform you that your husband has just passed away. <gasps> oh, poor John. Grisham speaking. Roger, it's Ivy. Ivy, why haven't you called me before? What's been happening? Oh, Roger, it's been such an ordeal you don't know. And that dreadful man, that inspector from Scotland Yard, has been here again asking questions. What kind of questions? Well, darling, I can't tell you everything over the telephone, but he said it was his duty to find out the truth. The truth about what? They found out that poor Jarvis died of arsenic poisoning. Suicide? The inspector says they know it was murder. What possible motive could I have? None, of course, darling. But I was silly enough to let out to the inspector that you had been, well, fond of me in a sort of way. Are you there, Roger? Yes. Yes, go on, Ivy. Well, the moment I said it, I saw what a mistake I'd made. But he spoke as if he already knew such a lot. Or at any rate, some part of it. What part of it? Well, that even if I didn't care for you, you had been very, very fond of me. Are you there, Roger? Yes. Yes, Ivy. Go on. What else? Well, he's certain to ask if I've ever been to see you at your house, I mean. Well, uh, of course, I said no. 
Are you still on the line, Roger? Yes, Ivy. Well, you won't give me away, will you, Roger, darling? No. No, Ivy, don't worry. I won't give you away. Roger Gresham, the jury, after a careful and patient hearing, have found you guilty of the willful murder of Jarvis Lexton. The sentence of the court upon you is that you be taken from here to a lawful place of execution and that you be there hanged by the neck until you be dead. There, my dear. You mustn't give way like this. I can't help it, Miles. It's been such a shock. First poor Jarvis and now. Well, it's all over now. Look here, Ivy. Why not take a long voyage somewhere far away from here? The CM is marvellous for forgetting one's troubles. I make a fresh start somewhere. Uh, Rio, for instance. Oh, I've always wanted to see Rio. Perhaps we can go there for our honeymoon. Honeymoon? Are you thinking of remarrying? Why, Miles, darling. Of course. Don't you remember what you said? If I were only free. Well, I'm free now. Ivy. I, well, I, I don't quite know what to say. I'm, I'm very fond of you, of course, and I'll gladly lend you any financial assistance, but as for marriage, particularly under the circumstances, you, you must know there's been a great deal of talk about you and Gresham. Oh, surely you don't believe those stories. There's never been anyone but you, Miles. If I'd met you before I met Jarvis... We could never have been in any case, Ivy. Surely you realize that? I'm not good enough to be Lady Rushworth. Is that what you're trying to say? Uh, too good, if you like. It's not my choice in any case. I was born with this name, and I, I have certain responsibilities. You... you stop his knob! Well, I, I wish I could make you understand. There's my mother, for instance. She's an invalid, a heart, you know. And if I were to marry, well... You, I, I believe the shock would kill her. But the things you said, the present you gave me, what was I to think? Well, I'm sorry if you thought I was leading you on. The night that I gave you the bag... The emerald the... bag. You were saving it for the kiss-off, was that it? Well, that's rather a crude way of putting it. It matches the colour of your eyes, you said. And I said I'll carry it with me always. <laughs> Funny, isn't oh, it? Oh, Ivy, please, the servants. Don't you, Ivy, please me. I want them to hear. Perhaps the whole world will hear one day that Ivy Lexton poisoned her husband for Lord Rushworth. Ivy, what are you saying? Two lives weren't too much for Ivy to sacrifice, and the risk of her own life meant nothing. She wasn't good enough for the you, Lord. You... Dear, sweet little Ivy Lexton. Why, I can't believe it. Well, let me tell you something you can believe. I never loved you. I loved your money and the title. I wanted to be a lady. Oh, what a joke. Well, I'm not sorry. I've always hated your kind deep down inside of me. Cowards. Cowards, all of you. Anything to save face, anything. Roger Gresham going to the gallows because he's too much of a gentleman to tell the truth. That I was in his flat the night Jarvis was poisoned. You let an innocent man be hanged? If he'd loved me as he pretended to, he would have killed Jarvis. If he'd been a man instead of a gentleman. If any of your kind were real men. Well, I've had enough of it. Take your foul present. Pretty little thing, isn't it? A little handbag, and so expensive, too. The emerald matches my eyes, does it? Get out of here and take it with you. No, thank you. I'm not in the market for emeralds this season, my lord. They cost too dear. <laughs> We've analysed the residue in that handbag, Inspector. Oh, good, good. Uh, what did you find? Well, quite a lot of face powder, some tobacco crumbs, and about three grains of chemically pure arsenic. Leave it here. Sergeant, bring in Mrs. Lexton. Yes, sir. Bring in the prisoner. What's the meaning of this, Inspector? Please, please instruct your officers to treat me with respect. I'm not a common criminal. Let her go, officer. Thank you, Inspector. Mrs. Lexton, have you... Uh... Have you ever seen this handbag before? Oh, where did you get that? I'll ask you a question. Where did you get the arsenic that we found in it? I'm sure I don't know. Why don't you ask Lord Rushworth? My dear Mrs. Lexton, surely you know that Lord Rushworth is in no condition to answer questions. What do you mean? Lord Rushworth died last night of the effects of arsenic poisoning. <laughs> Mr. 
And so my story draws to a close. It's a comfort to me as I sit here in the condemned cell to know that so many loyal friends still believe in my innocence, in spite of all the ungentlemanly things the Crown Prosecutor said about me during my trial. I was especially gratified at the tribute paid to the costumes I wore in the witness box. One admirer has written to compliment me on my delivery and the poise I exhibited under cross-examination. I'm told that my remarks were clearly audible in the very back row of the spectator seats, in spite of the overcrowding. And on the final day of testimony, I received that greatest of all the tributes an actress can command. My audience was moved to tears. And so, in spite of all the misfortunes that have befallen me and my loved ones, I have at last realized my life ambition. The end. Well, Mrs. Lexton, does it meet with your approval? Well, I think you might point out that I killed Lord Rushworth, too. Of course, between you, you and me, my dear, I didn't. It must have been suicide. But you know, it makes a better story. And uh, please print the photograph that was taken of me outside St. Paul's after my husband's funeral. That was the smartest frock I ever owned. I think that can be arranged, Mrs. Lexton. And uh, how much did you say your paper's going to pay for my story? Two hundred pounds. We thought that was quite generous. Well, it's not much, but it'll come in handy. They're hanging me next week, you know, and I haven't a thing to wear. And so closes the story of Ivy, in which Roma Wines have brought you Anne Richards as star of tonight's study in Suspense. Suspense is produced, edited, and directed by William Spear. Before Miss Richards returns to the microphone, let me say a word for Roma Wines, the sponsor of Suspense. Famed hostess Elsa Maxwell recently said this about gracious entertaining. Serving glorious amber-golden Roma California sherry is truly a distinguished expression of hospitality. Your guests will appreciate the delightful flavor, aroma, and color of Roma Sherry before dinner and during the evening. Serve cool. From California's choicest vineyards come distinctive Roma Sherry and all other fine Roma wines. The quality of Roma wines never varies. Always the same tempting flavor, always pleasing to the palate, yet cost only pennies a glass. And the next time you use vermouth, choose Roma vermouth. Zestful, full-flavored Roma vermouth is blended, developed, with all the traditional winemaking skill of the Roma wineries, is made and bottled in the heart of California's famous vineyards, yet surprisingly low-priced. Try Roma vermouth soon, won't you? This is Anne Richards with a very important word. Our fighting men still need lots of weapons, ammunition, food, and supplies to defeat Japan. And they still depend on us at home to help pay the way. There'll be one less war loan this year. So to do our share, we must buy bigger war bonds now during the seventh war loan. War bonds, remember, are the world's safest investment. Thank you, Anne Richards. Next Thursday, same time, Mr. Henry Daniel will be your star of Suspense. Presented by Roma Wines, R-O-M-A, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.